Welcome back to the Seeing Things shop. In this video, we're going to be building a 16 foot workbench. We're going to glue the top up in one piece to test the limits of what I can work on in the shop. Then I'm going to paint some old cabinets that I found for super cheap as a base and save the whole project after I use the wrong color stain on the top. So as you can see, a few of these boards have a pretty significant warp. We're gonna use those for the small four foot pieces and hopefully they work. We can sort of avoid the warpage and still get to use the material. So basically this is a configuration. We've got eight feet, four feet, eight foot, four feet. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 pieces of eight feet. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of four foot. Uh, we'll see where we end up, but that's pretty much the plan. So let's get to work cutting these up. So for resawing, I almost exclusively use a coarse tooth blade. There's no reason for me to get this perfectly off the saw, especially if we're going to the joiner afterwards. That'll do the work that we need. Up until this point we've been rough cutting, but to get a square straight glue edge the joiner is the perfect tool. I'll run all the pieces through the joiner on the face so we get nice clean lines in our glue up and I'll address the other board faces in a bit. Since I like to experiment when I'm working on the shop, we're gonna to try to do this backwards. So normally, you take your material, you'd surface all four sides. That way, when you have a glue up, they all line up perfectly, okay? I'm gonna to try to take these janky, warped boards and try to glue them all up together and then try to surface the sides after and see if we can get a flat bench top. This is not the proper way to do this. And this bench top is also 16 feet, which is almost the length of my shop. So it'll be a test of a couple things. Can I build it this way? How much more work is it? And what are the largest pieces of lumber I can expect to work with reasonably in the new shop? And here's a pro tip, if you've got a couple of boards that aren't quite lining up, add a call with a shim on one side while clamping the other, and this will pull the boards into flat. After the first stage of the glue up was dry, I decided to lay the pieces out on the floor so I can get an idea of how they're stacking up. I'll cut the long pieces to size as I do the glue up since they're all a little bit different in length.
I'd like the edges on these boards to be perfectly straight, but I can't think of a better way to check it than a chalk line. So we're going to do that. I don't have a reference surface that's 16 feet in the shop. Now that we've got the bench top glued up, it'd be nice to have a real hard, durable edge. So I'm gonna use some of this leftover oak. I'm gonna cut the pieces down to size. Now that we've got the durable oak on the front and the sides trimmed flush, I'd like to put a backsplash around the whole thing. That way whenever I'm working here or I have tools that I'm sliding on and off, I'm not worried about slamming them against the wall and damaging the wall. So I happen to have a few pieces of this big salvaged molding that I'll never use for any projects so I don't feel bad about ripping it down and making it work for this purpose. Now that they're all trimmed, I'm just going to go over them with a putty knife. Make sure I get rid of any bad spots or high spots. And I think I'm just going to run them through the planer to clean up the backsides a little bit because where these nails push through, we've got a bunch of bumps there. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit of putty and fill all the holes that are in there. I've actually never used this before. I've had this can for a long time. The powder is white, but the stuff comes out yellow, so that's good to know. <laughs> While we're waiting for the putty to dry on the backsplash, we can actually prep these cabinets for paint. Most of the time, you don't actually have to strip off all of the old finish. I'm just going to take some steel wool, abrade the whole surface, go back over it and wipe it down with denatured alcohol, and then it'll be ready for paint. I'm going to make sure I wear a respirator and gloves because I don't know what finish was used here, but it should be a pretty quick process to get this prepped. Cabinets are ready for paint, but before I paint them, I'm going to finish the top. I grabbed the wrong can of stain and without testing it, I put it directly on the bench top. Maybe wiping it off with a towel will make it a little better color. It did help lighten it up a little bit, but I figured why not just go with it. After getting the top stained to this horrible brown color, I had to do something to fix it up. And normally poly shades isn't something I enjoy using, but in this case it lightened up the color and warmed everything up a little bit. And I don't think it looks too bad, it even almost matches the hardware on the cabinets.
I also want this bench to be really sturdy, so I made some L brackets out of steel angle, and these will allow me to mount the top to the wall and to the cabinets. Normally you'd install trim or a backsplash with a little bit of adhesive on the wall and a finish or brad nail to hold it there. I'm going to use screws because these might get busted up and I want to be able to pull them right off and put a new piece back on whenever I want. To blend the screws in so they aren't so obvious, I've got a little bit of paint on this sponge. I'm just going to go ahead and dab each one until they blend. I do realize I did this build backwards and upside down and you may have cringed a little bit while watching it, but I appreciate you sticking with me until the end of the video. I think the big takeaway here is to get your material as straight and flat as possible before starting a project with it. Mistakes are bound to happen, but they can be happy accidents if you're willing to try some new solutions, and old ugly junk can be made into new ugly junk. Let me know what you think of this build. Did you have the urge to slap the stain out of my hand when I was making this crappy bench top look even more crappy? And even if you did, I want to thank you for watching. I spent the last couple years building this shop from the ground up. I've got a whole shop build playlist with a bunch of videos in it if you're into that sort of thing. And until the next video, you guys have a good one. So conveniently enough, I have a few pieces of this old, big, busted molding. Big busted molding. <laughs> big busted molding. That's not, that's not what it is. <laughs> Well, that was horrible. <laughs>